Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. Today I saw a couple of articles. Actually, it's been over the past couple of days. I've seen articles about Gabby Douglas, the famous Olympic gymnast. And these articles are not about her accomplishments during the Olympics. They're not about what she's done athletically. Instead, these articles are about people attacking her. You have black men and women attacking her because they say that her hair looks bad. You know, they spend all this time and energy talking about this sister's hair. Instead of celebrating her accomplishments, that's what they would rather focus on, her hair. And I just want to talk about that for a second. And also, people have been attacking her saying that she's not patriotic because she didn't have her hand on her heart during the playing of the national anthem during the Olympics. And I just want to deal with both of those issues briefly. Um, the fact that so many people are fixated on her hair tells you about the deep-seated issues of self-hatred that we have to still deal with as a people today. For many of us, like all of our lives, we were taught that our hair was nappy, that our hair is ugly, that the only beautiful hair or only good hair is straight hair. You know, hair that resembles the hair of our ancestors is called nappy. Hair that looks more European is called good. And we still had a problem. You still hear people say this today. Oh, she has good hair. Oh, she has bad hair. So when people look at a black woman's hair, they judge her by her hair. They judge her appearance by her hair. And if her hair resembles our natural African hair, then they attack it. But if it's straight, like a white woman's hair, then all of a sudden it's beautiful, it's glamorous, it's good. We still deal with this pathology. We deal with it so much so that people feel the need to straighten their hair to the point of damaging their hair, you know, putting these toxic chemicals in their hair. And also people find the need to actually get somebody else's hair and sew it into their own hair. Sewing somebody else's hair, weaving somebody else's hair into their head. Spending all this money so that they can have hair that does not look like their natural hair. So that they can escape their true nature. And so that they can adopt somebody else's nature. And all of this is a result of the white supremacist programming that many of us have experienced just growing up in this society. People are pressured to assimilate. People are taught that white people are like the standard of beauty, that the white woman is the standard of beauty. So you have these black men chasing white women or very light women. You have a lot of black men Despite all the things you hear here on social media about people speaking out against black women with weave and all that kind of stuff, you have a lot of black men that are attracted to black women with long, straight hair or to women with long, straight hair, period. So a lot of women feel pressure to live up to that image that a lot of black men find attractive. So they perm their hair. They straighten their hair and they get these weaves. I mean, do you really think that black women would be buying these weaves and straightening their hair and all that kind of stuff if a large number of black men, if most black men were attracted and expressed their attraction towards natural hair? If most black people in general loved their natural hair, their natural features. You wouldn't have a whole industry around women straightening their hair and buying weaves. And you wouldn't have all these people 
so fixated on this athlete's hair that they would rather talk about that hair instead of her accomplishments. So that's, you know, that's all that I have to say about that. I just think that at some point we have to move beyond the self-hatred. We got to learn to love who we are as a people. Embrace our African heritage. Embrace who we are as a people and stop trying to seek acceptance from others. Stop embracing somebody else's standard of beauty and stop attacking our own. A lot of this self-hatred is instilled in people young. When they're attacked, just like Gabby Douglas is being attacked right now. Little girls, you know, are, are told that their hair is nappy growing up. So it's no wonder that they straighten their hair. It's no wonder that they wear wigs or weaves and all that kind of stuff. Because early on, they're taught that their hair is ugly. Early on, they're taught that their hair is nappy. Early on, they see some in the community being celebrated as having good hair because their hair is straightened. So, of course, that psychology, that psychological slavery just continues from one generation to the next. And it's about time for us to break that chain and learn to love who we are as a people. So I want to move on to the other issue dealing with Gabby Douglas, and that's these people complaining about her not placing her hand on her heart during the playing of the national anthem. And she says that it wasn't, a, um, you know, something intentional. You know, she didn't intend to disrespect anybody or anything like that when she didn't place her hand on her heart. And I don't have any reason to doubt her. Um, so people need to just lay off of her. She was standing up. She was at attention. She did show respect for this country by standing with the others and, you know, showing her patriotism. You know, she, she saw her patriotism many times. So these people need to just lay off this sister and leave her alone. Um, and if anybody has the right not to put their hand on their heart during the playing of the national anthem, it would be black people. Given our history in this country, given all the hundreds of years that we were enslaved, given all the decades of Jim Crow, given the modern day conditions that black people endure today. When you look at the um, wealth disparity between black and white people, I recently saw an article, I haven't had a chance to get to it, but it just exposes the stark disparities in income between black people and white people, the stark disparities in terms of wealth. When you live in such a society, when you live in a society where these police kill black people regularly and get away with it without even being charged many times, I can understand why somebody wouldn't place their hand on their heart. The, when I look at it, the history that our people have endured, being enslaved, being beaten, being raped, being lynched, being burned alive and being castrated, our children being used as alligator bait. When I look at that history, I can understand why a sister wouldn't put her hand on her heart during the playing of the national anthem. 